And this is um white claw in my jar, by the way. <laughs> this is uh, water, but I wish it were white claw. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to Do You Know What The Fuck We're Doing? Today on a very special episode, we are gonna be talking to my good friend, Erin Elise, and my daughter will be making cameo appearances in the background. So we're just gonna work through it. Cause if this thing had any production value whatsoever, it wouldn't be done by me. Thank you, Erin, for joining us. Of course, I'm so happy to be here. Awesome, so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what it is that you do? Um, so I am an illustrator and witch living in Nashville. I uh, have my own tarot and oracle deck that I have illustrated. The oracle deck is out, the tarot deck is pending, um, and a second oracle deck that just came out this year. And I primarily draw. You've drawn and, for me before. Yeah, I've drawn for you before. You were actually my very first commission client. So your invoice was the first one that I got, and I think I saved the template for when I had to invoice other people. It's probably the first invoice I ever made, so. Which leads us to our very next question. Do you know what the fuck you're doing? Absolutely not. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm figuring it out, though. I think... Um, I would say I know about 25% of what I'm doing at this point, and it's taken me quite a few years to get to that point, so. So I am so glad that you're chatting with me on this thing, because I have always felt like you know what you're doing. I feel like your branding, your aesthetics, your consistency is so on point, but I also have always admired your transparency and your vulnerability. I've, I've thought about this a lot recently, because I think uh it's it's so strange to me when people say things like that to me because I'm exactly the same with with everyone else where I'm like you look so much more put together than I ever could have any hope of being whereas like I'm just taking you know I, I just have a cell phone I don't even have a camera like but at the same time like sure I have an eye for color and I can carry it a feed and you're based in Nashville is that correct yeah I'm see. born and raised Born and raised in Nashville. I've got a lot of friends in Nashville, obviously, because I'm a musician, so a lot of ties there. And um, I am, like, kind of watching the drama from afar of, like, people going on, like, party buses in downtown Nashville. <laughs> Sorry about that. You have not lived, Annie. You have not lived until you've been stuck in traffic at 1 p.m. on a major road behind a boat being pulled by a tractor full of bachelorette girls wearing booty shorts, shaking their asses, and getting absolutely sloshed at, like, 1 p.m. Did you I, summon them? Did, could, did, did you I summon them? Not you personally, but, like, the Nashville area, did you ask for all of these trashy girls to come down? We must have. Some, <laughs> I don't know what we did, but there was something that happened along the way. Like, somebody fucked up. <laughs> What's been a big learning curve for you and your journey? I think, ultimately, finding my place in it has been a very big learning curve. Um, when you're in school for an art degree or a design degree of any kind, um, there's a lot of pressure to kind of assert yourself in the business realm of art. So kind of being in um, maybe a role under a firm, doing work for clients, things like that. And I figured out pretty early on that that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, I think when I started kind of diving more into my spirituality and my witchiness is when it really kind of like clicked like, oh, this is what I want to be doing with my art. And it kind of just fell into place from there. Um, but like knowing that I can say no to things that don't feel like projects that resonate with me has been my biggest, like having the ability to only take on what I want to do is like everything. That's awesome. That's one of the big reasons why I think we all follow the siren song of, um, you know, independent entrepreneurship because we want to follow our heart and that's why but then we all end up sometimes being like oh my god like can I just have a boss can someone please tell me what I'm supposed to be doing <laughs> exactly and I mean like if we're getting down to business stuff the biggest learning curve is just I mean what the fuck is a business how do I run one like taxes I don't I mean it's all that's like I can't even get into that because that has nothing to do with art but that is the biggest learning curve is figuring out how to take this thing that I love to do that makes me happy and make it into a business that's not fucked up capitalism, but 
And there's also the element of protecting your, your personal life financially. Definitely. For sure. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's in that big 75% chunk. That's like, who knows, man, I can pay my bills right now, but ironic that being forced to leap out of that job at the beginning of this was what prompted that ability. Before we started this conversation, you mentioned that COVID has been devastating. And yet personally, you've also found moments of like joy and growth. Yeah. And I have experienced the same thing where it's almost like you're graduating from college, but like in prison, it's because you have nothing else to do, nothing else to break up those large chunks where you're just like screaming at your Google calendar. I also think it's a little rude that like some other like artists have been like, you know what, I just really cultivated my TikTok following and now I have like a number one song and I'm like, great for you. Can you please read the room? You know, the reality is that it is Instagram and it's, it's so it's hard to disconnect the product from the process and like, all right, so you did this amazing thing, but also like how many times did you cry in the fetal position on the floor? How do you deal with that type of like comparison culture and that scarcity mindset that I think always comes from social media, which is a place where we want to show off our accomplishments. And it's also a place where I don't think we're necessarily being fake by putting out this version of ourselves that is productive and successful, you know, I think it's, it's incorrect and also maybe has a tinge of internalized misogyny to be like, oh, well, that's really not me. I'm actually a mess. You know, you need to own that part of yourself that's successful. But at the same time, as you said, it's not the whole picture. So is that something that affects your life and your career? I think it used to really heavily. Um, it was definitely a big struggle for me, the kind of scroll suck of just feeling like it's it's like self-mutilation where you know that the next image you scroll to is going to also make you feel trash about yourself, but you do it anyway because it's like a weird like hit of something. Um, I love Instagram and I have found that the thing that has saved me from that misery has just been changing my mindset, like, on my own terms, like, dealing with my shit myself. Um, Magic has been really important to me in that process, like, um, abundance and magic, just kind of, like, working through my scarcity mindset has been, and just in life in general, has changed my relationship with social media more than I could ever possibly have imagined. There's enough for everyone. There's enough for everyone. Especially being, I would never say that 30 or 31 is old, but I think especially in the arts world and especially in the performing arts world, we have this like vampiric attitude towards youth and like people who get famous and successful very young, like late teens, early 20s. And obviously I'm so happy for all of those people. And I say that genuinely, like I'm very happy for people who find success no matter what, Mm -hmm. but it can sometimes feel a little frustrating when that's not you or like you you're no longer 25 so it's kind of like oh my god what's my story Um, and it's important to remember that there's enough room for every type of story and that includes people who were like living in basements in their 20s you know (laughs) and like I mean just along the same lines of just it's not too late so do you have any parting shots any advice be honest uh I've been thinking a lot about thresholds lately and my thing just kind of over the past couple of weeks has been whenever I get to that point in the day where I feel overwhelmed or like I just can't do it or like it's not worth it I pretend like I am walking through a portal into a different world and it's helped me it's okay so like you know the thing you do where you're like oh I, I screwed up already today today's today's over today's done. Yeah. nothing else good can happen I'm really bad about that so I'm working on it and I walk through the portal it's a different day and I sit down and start again oh my gosh harnessing that so it's not something where it's like I have to abandon this project completely right. and like run away you right. know I can't remember what my Pluto's in, but I have a Scorpio moon and I have definitely run away, like straight up quit a job and moved like at 11 PM more than once in my life. Cute when I was like 22 or 23. (laughs) Now I think people would like, you know, call the police, but a fresh start doesn't mean like setting fire to the rest of your life. 
it definitely doesn't mean setting fire to the rest of your life. Thank you so much. I cannot wait for your tarot deck to come out. Thank you. Erin, Elise, thank you so much for chatting with us today. This has been a very wonderful conversation, and I've taken a lot away from it. Um, so cheers to you, a fellow Leo, a fellow Southern witch. Um, I finished my white claw, so I don't really know how I'm going to cheers, but... I like that we both have jars. We both have jars, and one of us had an alcoholic hard seltzer in it, you know. It's, it's very Southern witch of us. <laughs> I All right. Well, thank you so much, and cheers to kind of knowing what the fuck we're doing. Cheers to kind of knowing. <laughs>